if you have a poor teacher for three years, mm. you therefore would need to have a good teacher for six consecutive years in a row. Mm. Wow. That, oh, man. And there's no guarantee. Woo. There's no guarantee. So if you have three consecutive years of poor instruction, whether they're black, whether they're white, whether they're, you know, whatever right. other nationality, Wherever. if the mm -hmm. instruction is poor, then the instruction is poor. And right. then we're relying on the public school system to provide that individual child with now six consecutive years to make up that gap. Mm -hmm. that's, that's problematic. And that's not necessarily race. And I just think that, that we don't understand, and I get it. I get it. But with that, there are lots of great areas um, within our public school system that our parents don't necessarily understand. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's not their fault. Let me just say that. You're it's right. Their fault. You're right. Yeah. I, I'm glad you were saying that because my mom spent however many years homeschooling my younger siblings. And she put mm. a lot into them. And it was, right, it was right. very taxing for her, very stressful. But she did it, and she did a good job. But at the same time, me, somebody who went to a public school compared to my younger siblings, like, I'm really social, so I love the public school setting. Like, I know a lot of people had a hard time in, like, high school stuff, but those were my best years when mm. I was in school. I love school, every aspect of it. So, like, to be strictly homeschooled would have messed me up. Like, I wouldn't be who I am if I was 100% homeschooled. But my parents did a good job of teaching me as a supplement to what I was learning in school. So, like, yeah, sure, I would get, like, my basic education from school. But when I came home, it was like, you know, conversations I had with my dad led to a lot of education. Right. Right. That's your real education. Yes. I, in my opinion. So I kind of feel like depending on your child, like for my brother, he was homeschooled. Yeah, he needed to be homeschooled because of how he is and who he is. But for somebody like me, nah, that wouldn't work. <laughs> that wouldn't work. And, 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 and what you said, there were so many things in what you just said. So let me back up the bus just a little bit. Sure. Um, one of the things that resonates most with me with what you said was when you came home, your parents had conversation with you. Mm -hmm. You know, you went to high school, uh, you know, in the regular sector, but yet your siblings needed homeschooling and that worked for them. Mm -hmm. That for me is a parental aspect of knowing your child and mm -hmm. knowing what they need and differentiation. Right. So, you know, we expect the teachers to differentiate in the school system, mm -hmm. but we got to remember as an entity, as a people, we've got to start at home and not give the system all of our power per se and let them just decide how we're going to educate our children. Right. So I, I think that was, was powerful because me as a Catholic school product right. and a public school teacher right. and educator, I did trust the public school with my kids. But when I saw it going left, I pivoted. All right. And different, you know, so like my, both of my kids went to um, private school for middle school. And then I put them back into high school because the, the middle school around here did not meet my expectations. Right. But I think the one thing that I heard Miss Portia say was her parents and mm -hmm. what was involved. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, putting your child and sending them on a school bus. All right. There has to be a lot of at-home education. There does. Like, I mean, I, yeah, the brunt. I'm sorry, Portia. No, no, I was just saying, I was just going to piggyback off of that a little bit. Like, it was really important to me for it to be done the way that it was done. Of course, I didn't realize how good of an time. idea that was. Yeah, at the time, you know, I was too young to know, but... When I became an adult, and I was like, yeah, that was pretty dope that they were able to mm -hmm. see that. And I've had a lot of, recently, during COVID, I've had conversations with parents and stuff. And a lot of them, a lot of what I'm hearing is that a lot of parents didn't know how poorly their children was being taught 
or how mm. poorly that child was learning, not necessarily because of the educator or the instructor, but because of their child's whatever. They didn't know how bad their child was doing in school until they were forced to homeschool them because of COVID. So they're sitting there like having to help the child work on a computer because of COVID. So classes online. And they're like, oh, my God, my child doesn't know this. They don't know that. They don't know this. They don't know that. Why? And it's like, well, where you been? You you sent them off to school. And then when they come home from school and they're, they're like, fine. And you let it go. Like, it was natural for me. But every time I came home from school, whenever my dad asked me, and I'm just weird, though. Whenever my dad asked me how it was school, I would sit there and I would tell him what happened from first period all the way to last period. He would just get the rundown of my whole day. But that's what sparked conversations. And that's how I was able to learn stuff. Because if he heard something that was like, eh, what? You know, he didn't like it too much. That's right. That's we right. would talk about I, it. I and then the I would, thing. <laughs> right, I would learn mm-hmm. from that mistake or whatever, whatever. So it was like, luckily, my parents didn't have to do that. They've been very involved in our education. But hearing these other parents, they had no idea. No idea that their child didn't know, like, the multiplication table. And they're like, in what, 10th grade? Mm. Like, <laughs> I don't know if they're 10th grade, but like, Come on. you didn't know that because you weren't involved. Now you That's know. That's right. Because you have to be involved, right. so to speak. Right, now you know because you, ha- yeah, no, but you do. You have to be involved now. Because if you don't, then your child fails and you have to deal with all that, whatever, whatever. Because if you're at home and you just leave it up to your child and your child's not attending the Zoom classes or whatever, you know, so you have to be involved. <laughs> they're coming to get you, yeah. Exactly. No, <laughs> no. I don't know if they're coming to get you. But... I mean, they should come to get you. <laughs> they you should, know what I'm they do with they actual should. school. If you don't go to school and you get what's it right. called, truancy, they're coming to get you. They coming to That's get right. you. They coming to get you. Well, coming to get the parents. Well, and the other interesting thing is I want to go back to um, Miss Portia is when I said in the beginning, you don't know what you don't know. Right. So I think this situation has forced parents to kind of be like, oh, I, I, I didn't know that they didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Or I, I, I didn't know that I should, you know, be doing X, Y and Z. And and, you know, one of the interesting things is you said when you're when your dad would ask you, how was your day? I will tell you, I have conversation with parents all the time. And, and I say, well, when you ask your child, how was your day today? Oh, it's fine. Mm-hmm. And they leave it there. Mm-hmm. There's no further pro. Well, what do you mean it was fine? It was fine all day. Was it fine during math? Was it fine during reading? Was it fine? Right. During- There's no further prodding. But that also goes back to we don't know what we don't know. Right. We don't know how to ask those questions. We don't know how to dig deeper. We don't know. And in the same sense, you're like, okay, well, you should know something. Like, <laughs> a- ask them something, you know, something. Oh, right. it's fine. Right. And then we go on about our daily lives. And then we're angry with the system, per se, because, oh, they're failing. Well, nobody told me. But did you ask? Did yeah. You ask? <laughs> did you ask? Right. Question, Dr. Adrian. You guys brought up an interesting point. This pandemic, I've spoken to many, many educators, and many of them feel that the pandemic has put our children further back than they already were because they're not in a classroom. How do you feel about how the pandemic has affected our children by being home? Well, I know it's a very broad question. No, no, no. You're you're good. And I have a lot of feelings. I'm trying to channel all that. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, my initial feeling with the pandemic was right. now parents get to see what it is that we are doing during the day with their. Kids. I agree. I agree mm. with that. Yep. I think that has resonated um, first and foremost because a lot of you know even in my different roles in education, whether it was preschool teacher whether it was, you know, teacher pre-K through four, whether it was assistant principal, principal, instructional coach, the one thing that resonates when I've had conversations with parents is, well, I send them to school. That's what you should be doing. And not necessarily the, the partnership aspect. Mm-hmm. So I think in this 
facet. I'm going to say, I feel like the virus allowed parents an opportunity to mm-hmm. get more in tune mm-hmm. with their babies, where mm-hmm. they are, what mm-hmm. they need, but also get them more in tune when the teacher calls you, whether she may be a great teacher or not so great teacher. Right. But typically when parents, I mean, when teachers call, sometimes it's not anything different, but I think it's been an opportunity for families to get together, right. to be closer. Now, I'm also going to say, and I'm just speaking specifically from that Title I perspective, historically in Title I schools, our babies are already kind of behind. So do I feel like it didn't help close the gap? I do. I do. But I don't think that it was any more detrimental than if they would have been in school, per se. Mm. A lot of those deficits were already there. Good point. They Great were already point. there. And so if you're an involved parent and you're on it and you've got those skills and you're, you're helping and you've got those mm-hmm. skills, then because at this juncture, everybody behind. Yes, I said everybody. Everybody. Everybody, everybody <laughs> behind. Yes. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Ain't nobody, you know, soaring any higher than anybody else at this juncture. That's right. Mm-hmm. I, I just think that this was an opportunity if, if I want to focus on the positive, which is what I want to do. Yes. Um, it was an opportunity for us to be closer as an entity and get more in tune and be able to support our babies. Right. Question. What would you say to a parent? Let's say um, a parent has like maybe like a teen child or whatever. And the teen is old enough to hop on a computer and do what they're supposed to do. But they're struggling. They're not focusing because they're at home. You know what I mean? Like uh, being in the school setting, it's, easy, I guess, easier for some people to focus because the instructor's right there. They're yelling at you, whatever, whatever. You can focus. But when you're at home, you can just... Go, you can just go chill, run to the kitchen 400 times to get food, maybe play with a dog, maybe go watch TV, something like that. Like, but for me, I kind of understand that because it's stressful to be home. And be, like, for me, I don't think I would cope well with that. For me to be at home by myself, having to try to focus when, you know, I got a large family playing around in the background and I got to try to focus on. What would you say to a parent who has to deal with that? Should they like pressure them or just understand that it's difficult for the child? I think that goes back into knowing your child and knowing your family. For me, to be very honest with you, it, it basically boils back down to routines and procedures. And have you effectively established those routines? Um, That's what it boils down to for me. Because if you have not said, okay, here's your schedule. Let me help you through the schedule. Let me model this for you. Let me see. And I'm looking. And what difficulties are you having with this? Is this plan effective? And I'm going to know it's effective by looking at the grades. I'm going to know it's effective by having conversation with your teachers. I'm going to know it's effective by having conversations with you as my baby to say, okay, well, I see you didn't log on today, but you've been here all day. (laughs) What happened? (laughs) Laundry ain't done. Your bed ain't made. Uh, The grass ain't cut. Uh, What you been doing? Like what, that's right, what, right? What's going on? What, what's you know? really real here? What's really real here? <laughs> so you know, like what happened? And then trying to adjust and put some support system oh, in place. So you know, I, I just think that in, and I just had a conversation with a parent the other day um, because she's like, "Well, you know, I leave for work, and the child is seven. You know, she said I leave for work at." blah, blah, blah time, but granddad is home and dad is home. And, you know, uh, he get up and he say, the work is too hard. Oh. But he not failing. He, right. He's failing because he's not completing assignments. That's the right. assignments that he completes, he can do. And when right. we have conversation, and I don't have that problem when I have a conversation with him. So, you know, well, I, you know, I just don't know. He said he don't want to do, oh, he said he don't want it. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. He which has that power. Which said 
He said he don't want. He to. said he don't want he to don't do want it. He to. said that's a powerful so response. The culture, it's the culture and the climate that we have within our families ourselves. That's and right. That goes back to the tools. Like mm-hmm. a lot of times, parents don't know what to do, and I say to them, "It's okay to say, oh, you don't know how to do X, Y, and Z, but you know how to navigate your game." <laughs> That's right. That next level all day, all day, yeah. all day. <laughs> but how do you combat that? How do you combat like being in a household where maybe like a majority of the people are saying, "Nah, don't worry about it. You know, just chill. Like, let's just let's just Man. relax. Don't worry about your work." But then you got that one person that's looked at as the bad person, right. and it's like that's the you know what do you call it? Like, like I'll let sergeant. you go first, Doctor Adrian. I can answer that. I will let you go first. So now, <laughs> like, now you go ahead, Mr. Johnson. You go ahead. And so hold, I'll- so hold on, hold on. So the question is, so give give me a scenario. Let's say it's me, my wife, and some other people. And mm-hmm. some other people are, are are telling me to be more lenient as far as education is concerned with my child. No, let's say, okay, let's say you are the one that's like telling Ava, get your work done. Get your work done. Right, that's that's what uh, I'm saying. But right. wifey okay. and whoever else telling- is in the house is telling her to chill, watch TV, mm-hmm. don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. How do you combat how do you combat that yourself? Because okay. it's just you. Well, I mean, I, I'm not going. I'm not trying to be facetious, but first and foremost, I need to rethink about who I, who I married first. Mm-hmm. You understand? Because I mean, and, and when I say that, I say that with a smirk on my face because that's one of the things that me and my wife actually agreed upon before we had our children. We were proponents of education. This is my second wife now. My yeah. first wife, we didn't have that connection. That's why she's an ex-wife. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So I don't think that I'm even going to have the conversation with a, a, a spouse about why I, I'm so stern mm-hmm. <laughs> on my own, on my child's education endeavors. You know what I'm saying? That's not even a conversation I'm going to really have because that's going to, you know, that's going to be a greater argument because now I have to look into her background. You know what I mean? What her, her as a counselor, what her, her parents did with her. Mm. educationally does he th- does she even graduate first and foremost did your parents graduate you know what i mean what's going on why 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 should we and and you know what i mean is she jealous of the child because the child is bright mm. and she doesn't want the child to succeed because yes parents are che- jealous of the children mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen out there a lot of parents i've met them you know what i mean I, I was married to one you understand but um yeah that's how i would combat that <laughs> i would have to ask myself oh what's going on here why why you know well, why are you, why are you um, d- doubting my, the credence and, and what I'm doing? You know why? Why are we having this? Why are we having this argument? I think that should be something that two people should agree on. Not, I don't think they should agree on um, the manner in which they 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 pursue the education, but they should agree on that education is important informally or formally. You yeah. understand? That should be something that they agree on. I think that's that's fundamental in, in a marriage, in my opinion.